first got to YouTube and started looking around, I was actually drawn in by a Thunderfoot video that I thought was pretty cool. I was looking uh, at, you know, atheist stuff and, you know, that whole bit. And I looked around and started realizing that there was a, um, a really cool community of people out there. And uh, the guy that I'm going to interview today is one of those people that had me rolling on the floor from the get-go. He managed us to do this by only filming the top half of his face, and I'm sure all of you know and love him, or you wouldn't be here. His name's Sarahan. And uh, when I first got the idea to do these interviews, he was one of the first ones that I thought of interviewing, so I thought he would be mad cool. He's the kind of guy that you would uh, sit around and have a beer with. Well, it took a little while to get the interview to happen. I guess we kept missing each other, and you know how that whole thing goes. I mean, when you're talking over the internet to someone you don't even know, who's going, hey, can I interview you? <laughs> well, anyway, we've agreed to do it, and so I want to film my side today. I actually filmed this once before, and it really sucked, and the sink was all out of whack, so I'm going to give this another go. But the thing is, is there's no script here, so I'm going to fly this one in. So if it sucks, there's no one to blame it on, but yours truly. Sarahan, I hope you're having a good night. My first question for you this evening is, who or what inspired you to make YouTube videos? Uh, it's kind of a crazy medium, you know. Um, you come on here and, you know, on television, if something sucks, you just turn the channel and off you go. But here on YouTube, it's not that simple. People tell you you suck and they hope your mom gets cancer and you fuck sheep and that whole thing. It's, it can be a pretty brutal audience. What possessed you to get into this whole arena? Good evening, Reverend Adam Smasher, and uh, good evening to everybody else watching this. Uh, first of all, thanks for asking me to do this. It's kind of a change of pace. It's kind of like a video I don't have to do where I'm pissed off at somebody. I can just talk. You know, I, I don't normally do videos like this, so fuck it. You know, something different. Um, let's see here. First question you asked me, why, why, do, why do I do this? What's the appeal? Why did I start to do this? Uh, it's really quite simple. You said who or what. There, there was never really a who. It was definitely more of a what. And the what is that I like to run my fucking mouth, and I love the sound of my own voice. Um, that's why I like blog TV better than sticking. Um, I don't have to listen to anyone else talk. Only me. Um, really, whenever I make a YouTube video, I've always got something to say. Usually I'm pissed off about something. And I, I've heard some bullshit during the course of my day from someone, either online or offline. And, and I just have to get it off my chest. So it's my little way of venting. Um, you mentioned the audience, and you get some really negative feedback, and people say, you know, really horrible things or whatever. They troll you. They say you suck, yada, yada, yada. I don't mind that shit at all. I enjoy it. And I, I'd like to think that uh, myself and my trolls, we have sort of like a, a very close relationship. I understand them, and I think they understand me. So, fuck it. It's a lot of fun for me when I get silly shit like that. So, that's basically it. The whole thing for me is just that. A lot of goddamn fun. Uh, I can get a little pissed off at times, but fuck it. I'm venting, and I enjoy it. Maybe I'm dating myself here. I know where I was at. You appear to be somewhat around my age. I hope that's not an insult. Do you remember where you were when Kurt Cobain died? Or did you even care? <laughs> um, do I remember where I was when Kurt Cobain died? I do, actually. I was, uh, I was pretty young. Um, I guess we're around the same age. And all that music was really popular when I was growing up, so I, I listened to the songs and to the band and everything, but I didn't have the kind of connection that uh, most people did, like with the band members. I, I, I never at that age, I didn't have like, and, and it's odd. I was in my mid-teens, so, and I, I didn't have any sort of like band personality that I looked up to. I, I don't remember having that, so I certainly wasn't upset or anything. But yeah, I was at home and I, I saw it on MTV News with Kurt Loader. So Kurt told me that Kurt was dead on MTV News. Um, the cool thing about when Kurt Cobain died, one thing I always remember is they had that little candlelight vigil thing for Kurt. And I saw clips of it on the news. And for a time, there was this 
a photograph that was in all the newspapers and all the magazines that came out after you know he committed suicide and everything unless you believe Courtney Love shot him but there was a picture of this girl and she was holding a candle and she had a tear in her eye and I'll never forget that fucking picture because at that age, like I said, I didn't really have that kind of connection with musicians, or any musician, and it just made me realize the effect that music can have on people, and I understood sort of at that time how fucking powerful music really was, and how much it could mean to you. So, as far as Kurt's death, it didn't really matter, but uh, it had me thinking about music differently, I should say. Number three. What in the fuck is that? Pastor George C. And uh, I also got this comment that I want to read. And Okay, if that's what I think it is, then it is this. That is a living dead doll. Yeah, and that is a dead baby in a crib of some type. Pretty fucking wicked looking, isn't it? Look at that shit. Evil little bastard. I actually have an entire collection of living dead dolls. Um, yeah, I'm a grown man. I collect dolls. Number four. I noticed that you're a eloquent and high class individual. There's no doubt that your closet has uh, is lined wall to wall with uh, luxurious tuxedos, Egyptian silk. Uh, as evidenced by your choice in beer, that being St. Ives, of course. My question to you is, is, are there any other fine beverages that you could recommend to our YouTubing audience out there? Okay, first of all, believe it or not, I don't have any fine tuxedos. As a matter of fact, I don't have any dress clothes at all. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I, I once wore house shoes to a funeral. That's a true fucking story. But before you give me any shit or anybody else does with that whole, you know, uh, respect for the dead rhetoric that everybody likes to spew out like it fucking matters, keep in mind my friend would have made fun of me if I showed up in a tux and he were still alive. So I figured in some odd way I was, pan you know, I, I was just going to be myself the day that he died. Fuck it. If I were a pallbearer, I might have worn real shoes, but anyway. Um, any other fine beverages? Um, I'm a whiskey man. Whiskey man. Believe it or not, I don't drink a lot of beer. Uh, but when I do, I, I drink the cheap shit because it's like, uh, I don't know, it takes me back. Let's say that. However, I I'm a bourbon man, and uh, one of my favorite bottles of bourbon, it it's called Booker's. And it's a 126 proof bottle of bourbon, and it cost about $60 a bottle. Um, but my God, it's fucking delicious. Definitely a sipping whiskey. Uh, any kids out there plan on buying some Booker's, make sure you uh, don't drink it like it's fucking very old Barton or Maker's Mark or some shit. It's not Crown Royal. It's not Hennessy. Be careful. 